I'll take you through the other world of uh, science publications. And I represent one of the uh, leading publications. All of you know Nature. So I work with Nature India. I am the editor there. And I uh, look at science in India. That's my forte. That's my core area of operation. <coughs> Mm. I started off, I, I don't have a PhD, and I don't have a postdoc, obviously. Uh, <laughs> I'm a very simple zoology undergrad uh, with a deep, deep interest in science. And I cannot afford to sort of tell you that I'm not interested in astrophysics or I'm not interested in uh, neurosciences because I have to do all of this on a daily basis, decode stories from all of these disciplines uh, as and when they happen. And uh, with stories, I mean not just the breaking stories, but even smaller stories, which would be of uh, interest not just to the lay public of a, a television channel or a newspaper, but also to the scientific community. Something that, that advances science, but might not be of a breaking news category. Even that kind of stories interest me. So I dabbled uh, in law, and I was training to become a lawyer um, when journalism happened. And that's how we started in India seven years back, 2007. And uh, we're doing mighty well, bringing to you the latest research that's happening across the country in labs, small, big, uh, peer-reviewed, non-peer-reviewed, uh, newsy bits that uh, you would miss out from conferences. And uh, we are proud to be the uh, uh, media partners for this event. And we are going to report about it <laughs> because we are media partners. Maybe I'll uh, take out yours and mine session from that. <laughs> and um, so that's how it has been. I'll just quickly take you through three or four slides which are essential. Uh, who I am, I'm a science journalist, editor of Nature India. Uh, I did zoology, law, personal management, and print journalism. And I have a mainstream med Indian media experience, and I have a love for everything that is science. What I do on a daily basis, I write, edit, commission, report, blog, blogs, Twitters, Facebook, all, all the social media campaigns. Uh, I do a science journal scan on a, almost on a daily basis for what's coming out of India. I plan all the online and print publishing projects that Nature uh, in India does. And we do a lot of uh, print uh, publishing projects as well. Um, what I love about my job is the adrenaline rush of chasing deadlines. Uh, the learning opportunities that it gives me on a daily basis. It gives me uh, the opportunity to interact with people like you on a daily basis, and I love that the most in my job. Uh, also, the fact that I am able to bring science to the masses, well, uh, also to the scientific community, to the, uh, to the astrophysicist who doesn't know about cell biology, to the neuroscientist who doesn't know about what's happening perhaps in nanosciences. So that's also a challenge to cro cro uh, cut across disciplines and to bring science in a manner on a platter that's peer-reviewed science, that is uh, sort of uh, the, uh, uh, the science that is published in the best of journals from India, and uh, to, to, to bring it to the scientific community and to the masses. What I don't like that much is the commerce of publishing. Well, we have seen scientists talking in terms of Excel sheets this morning, through, through this morning, all the, uh, the industry people and uh, the people. I belong to the old school thought, or should I say, I used to belong to the old school where science was, uh, the journalism profession was a vocation. It wasn't a profession at that point of time. It's a vocation. It was a vocation. It's a profession now. And as in any other profession, it has to make money. It has to make uh, publishing means business. It doesn't just mean uh, a vocation 
uh, something that I do just for the passion of it or for the love for it. So it's inescapable, the truth is inescapable, that publishing companies must make money to survive. And in order to survive, uh, uh, big publishing companies like Nature and Science, PNS and PLOS, even they have to make money. So there are some exercises that these publishing houses have to do in order that they stay in the business, that they stay competitive, that they stay in the publishing business. And that is where I find myself lacking a bit, uh, though I am sort of, I have been given a role to be the publisher of Nature India and all its allied pr uh, products in India this year. And uh, I am doing up my Excel sheets very rigorously. I am doing my project initiation documents, PIDs, uh, very regularly. But that's something not very close to my heart. Uh, but as we all have seen through the day, uh, big money means big business. So uh, that's, that's something that uh, I seriously think should be given to somebody else, not me. OK, some job advice from somebody who's um, not as, uh, uh, you, may, you may call me a novice in the, in the industry, uh, but uh, I have been asked to give some job advice. So how does one prepare to get into this kind of a job that I do? Uh, it's uh, primarily the love for communicating science, understanding science at a very granular level, where you can de-jargonize, this term is used very often whenever we have a science communication, science journalism kind of workshop, to de-jargonize science from the hematopoietic cells level, apop uh, uh, atopsis level, to, uh, to, to a level that everybody can understand. So um, you have to be passionate about doing that. And, um, what should your CV look like? It should have some science in it, not like mine, uh, which has just a little bit of science in it. If, I, if, if it has a PhD or a postdoc, it's well worth it. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's, uh, the CV would be uh, very well received uh, in a scientific publication. So it has had to have some science, some writing skills, which can be polished on the job. Uh, a little bit of publishing background helps if you have been on a student publication sometime or if you have published a paper uh, and can write a wonderful abstract out of it to, to show the publishing um, house, uh, uh, you know, uh, an abstract which, which makes sense to an editor like me uh, would, would be something that would make your CV shine. Mm, what is expected, uh, the expected remuneration? We've already, already been branded as poppers <laughs> and some, uh, uh, you know, 25,000 is for starters as interns. Uh, I would say if somebody were to come in for a one month or two month internship to the Nature Publishing Group, you would be paid somewhere around 25,000 and a, maybe a lunch and a drop off uh, from, <laughs> from uh, your place of stay. Uh, uh, but uh, if you're a good intern, uh, and you intend to stay on in publications, uh, in scientific publishing, then this might just go uh, up twice or even three times uh, as, as a regular contributor to the, uh, to the publication. Freelancers, uh, some of them I know, earn far more than that, about a lakh and a half a month, just writing science and medicine. You know, technical writers uh, um, who uh, who uh, write technology and medical writers who write medicine uh, and um, science writers who write science. If you have a combination of all of these, I think the, you, you could make money um, sitting at home uh, being freelancers, uh, but contacting the right people and getting through uh, to the right channels to make that kind of money. What's the prospect? Uh, it's immense because there's, there are no players. India Biosciences was here. I think th there's scope for everybody there because there's nobody doing this at the moment. So it's a nascent field. If somebody were to have a brilliant project which just communicates science of this country and maybe from across the globe on a platform uh, which could 
which could be which is a sellable platform i think it's it's a great model to make money uh, to be in the business uh, and of course i mentioned med medical and technical writing which is gaining popularity these days uh, i know of a lot of medical and technical writers who are making a lot of money being at home and uh, harnessing the right channels where do you look for these jobs in media houses uh, in publications like ours and of course in companies which are hiring uh, science writers by the dozen these days i know of a lot of biotech companies a lot of medical companies which uh, require uh, uh, such writers to polish their content um, uh, from pharmacovigilance to uh, you know um, uh, to cro services to what not so uh, i think there's a lot of scope there uh, are there adequate jobs in india well uh, there are uh, players coming in every day it's a growing field so the jobs are growing too as i said would doing a postdoc add to your profile yes and no it didn't add to my profile i don't have a postdoc so i can tell you that uh, without a postdoc you can become a good science writer there's no line that separates uh, a good science writer from a bad one it there is but not it's certainly not a postdoc uh you have to have as we say in journalism parlance knows for news where it is breaking what's new, what's the what's the kind of news that will make sense to uh, the uh, the public uh, not just the public to the scientific community uh, to the people who are uh, giving you out those grants to do science so oh, that's one thing then you obviously have to be very sharp and quick to pick up those things and be like um, you know uh, be here and now kind of people who can cover uh, an event from uh, uh, you, you can you have to visualize the event and then to plan backwards to be able to sort of uh, do justice to it and uh, to me adrenaline is something that is an essential uh, ingredient to be a uh, uh, in on top of your profession thank you very much i'll take questions if there are any yeah uh could you elaborate a little bit on the freelance that uh, could be done with nature india what yeah i of, i uh, thought i would start my talk by saying i have a job for each one of you and i do and that's serious uh uh anybody who wants to write science anybody who can write one paragraph of an abstract from even your own research and that makes sense to me has a job with me i could i could you know like tomorrow as we are going out of this hall i could give you a job of a freelance writer sitting right here at ncbs you could be writing for nature india but it has to be uh, as i said cutting edge science it has to be peer reviewed science that you're writing about uh, it has to be something that's newsy and it has to appeal to the editors first and then to the masses so uh, you think i answered your question i did okay yeah primarily our freelancers uh, some of them are from ncbs uh, already um, uh, they are um, people who have maybe interacted with me on some po at some point of time and uh, told me about their research or told me about some research which has excited them and i've uh, told them why don't you write to me uh, telling me about uh, what it means what the implications are what's the science behind it and Uh, they have if if some of them have followed that up and written to me and i've said well i, I don't understand this uh, in the form that you've written to me so i am happy to mentor any number of uh, people who want advice on science writing uh, and i do that on a daily basis a large chunk of my time i didn't mention it there uh, goes into mentoring young science writers 
into uh, uh, telling them what could be uh, a good science article, for example. What could interest uh, somebody who comes up to read Nature India? Um, uh, so, so feel free to pitch those kind of science ideas to me, which you think could be uh, cutting edge peer reviewed science, which makes sense to you and I. And also newsy bits, it might not be peer reviewed. Somebody is doing something great in a small lab um, sitting in, say, Bareilly. Doesn't matter. Uh, it might not have been peer reviewed, but it could make for a good news piece. So if you come across anything like that and you think it makes for good uh, for a good article, please feel free, free to pitch, pitch it to me. Did I give my, no, I didn't give my email. I, I, I can circulate it uh, across. So, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. So what's your intended mass? Is it the scientist people or? Uh, it is both. It is both. Nature India is read across platforms. It is read, read by uh, even high school students. Do you uh, go then go into regional languages? Well, the, that's a very interesting question, and I am happy you asked it. Uh, we thought of Hindi as a medium that uh, could be explored in this country to, to communicate science. But unfortunately or fortunately, science, the, the language of science in India is English. We all do science in English. There's not a single lab across this country which does science in Hindi. So, uh, and even uh, students, uh, primarily study science in in in, in English, so uh, that wasn't a proposition that could have been a commercial success. So uh, some things are also fueled by commerce, and this was one of them. Uh, that uh, could we do a regional language thing? So uh, while I do a lot of regional language uh, podcasts. Um, uh, and talk shows on BBC Science. Uh, BBC has a Vigyan or Vikas Science uh, thing where I do a lot of uh, Hindi talk shows just to get across the science to, um, to, to, the, to the masses that they have intended. But we don't have a platform for that. Right radio? Now. Will we? Radio. Radio, yes. That's what I'm saying. BBC Radio. Okay. Yeah. I think... All India Radio is more. All India Radio, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's a channel, and uh, I think it is a, a channel that is used very well. All India Radio uses that channel very well, communicating science, I guess. That's it. You. you we will uh, then move on to. <laughs> so we will then.